Foot Clan, the time is now. It's trophy time. It's title time. You got championship week starting tonight. We're breaking down all the matchups. We got starts of the week and the boom, boom kicker and news that you do want to hear and you don't want to hear and all sorts of stuff that you need to get ready to win. Take a deep breath. Settle in. Enjoy the episode. The Fantasy Footballer Studio is brought to you by Samsung Galaxy. Visit Samsung.com to learn more. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. It's title time. Jason pumps his fists like a man who might win a title. <laughs> With his eyes clenched. <laughs> Thursday, December 29th. Welcome in. It is go time. I Week really, 17 begins. I really wanted to go with it's championship time. But I think you did the right thing. Yeah, yeah. It's a lot of syllables. I know. That's why it would have been funny. It's time. Week seventeen. It begins tonight. Tennessee, one of the triple A franchises of the NFL, going to be running out some players. And Dallas will also be running out some players. Take care of things, I expect. <laughs> But uh, it begins. I mean, Jason is mainlining information. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's he is logged in. He is plugged <laughs> he is, himself. He's into, part of his lawnmower man. I mean, there is. Uh, I mean, nobody knows. I I'm I'm doing Sunday Live this week. I don't know why. Jason is the one that knows <laughs> oh, more man. information. Because, because the camera would turn on and Jason would just be sweating and just frozen. Yeah, I'd still be <laughs> like just ah! taking in more information. I would not be able to respond and give answers. Just sounds. I want a. <laughs> I wish we I, we won't do this because it takes uh, it takes resources, but if we had the way to, a way to stream his blood pressure, oh, oh man. to the internet, do you, oh do you remember the bigshimmy dot com? Uh, uh, MTV had a show back in the day. I think it was called Fear, and they would get it was like a reality show, but they would get the group of people and they would put them in a haunted place or a haunted house, but they all wore the camera rig. So that the camera was just oh, right yeah. in front of their face the entire time. It would be so you can see the fear. It would be amazing, and the BP. I mean, there there will yeah. be unhealthy levels would, this weekend. I will definitely get the uh, alert that says your heart rate is elevated while you are doing nothing. <laughs> yeah. Please, it seems you completed an activity. Please see a doctor. <laughs> so it's it's going to be very interesting. I was looking at your matchup this morning, Jason, and um, good luck. <laughs> You know, your projections were terrible mm -hmm, compared mm -hmm. to your opponent, but I did see you still had a Derrick Henry in your lineup. He is uh, in there right now. He's only projected for point eight points. Beautiful placeholder. Why are you doing that to yourself? Because I have two people in my IR I can't move out yet. Uh, yeah. This is all strategy, Mike. I'm next level on yeah, this. You're playing I was going to say, game. he's many levels ahead of us. <laughs> I'm playing chess. <laughs> he's playing against himself. I know that. Yeah. Uh, never not working. News and notes. Fantasy forecast starts of the week. The boom, boom kicker. Uh, I will say one thing at the top. I think it's important, especially this week. Like, it's Thursday. We're breaking games down. Don't take every word as a final conclusion on today's show. I've seen, look, the tilt is real. I've had more tags and questions about certain start-sit decisions than, than any week this year. People are, I've had texts from people I haven't talked to all year. <laughs> Remember me? We went to high school. They're like, I'm desperate. Please help. <laughs> and they want the answer, right? You want to know right here, right now, do I play this player? Devontae Adams versus oh, X. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> there is a good chance you'll have more information about the opportunities for certain players later in the week, and we can't know the future yet. So we will do our best with the information we have now to say what we do. But that doesn't mean your job stops. You want to win a title, that means you pay attention 
Follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. Pay attention on Sunday Live. We'll have the most recent, the most up to date information then. And so there is going to be a process, right? You can you can formulate that lineup, but keep it a little bit mm -hmm. um, loose with certain players because we are learning. We're Austin Eckler. Is he banged up? <laughs> no, don't do that. <laughs> they, I mean, it's a real situation. Yeah. I mean, look, look Jason at, has to stay connected to the matrix all week. Yeah. Look at last week, the, the progression of your confidence, or I was our confidence on the, uh, on this show of Zay Jones. Mm -hmm. Monday, it was you're coming off of, holy crap, Zay Jones. Number just, one overall he week. He just won you a week Tuesday Oh, there's going to be some weather on Thursday. The targets should be safe. Wednesday, you're like, okay, the weather's holding. I think I'm still playing Zay Jones. Thursday morning, you get the the full information about what the weather is, and it was nope. Yeah. We we had pivot. We had fully bailed out. All on, of us pulled them out of our lineup. Talked playing, about it. Like, tweeted it. Yep. Exactly. So uh, just be mindful of changing situations, and we're going to keep you as up to date as we can. One quick reminder before we jump in. FantasyChamps.com. Yeah, baby. It's title time. It's trophy time. FantasyChamps.com. Use the code free ring. You'll get a free $59 championship ring. This is uh, exclusive to us. We've, uh, we've, you know, pulled some strings for the Foot Clan. Want to get you swagged out. So, uh, yeah. So if you buy a trophy or a belt, you can get a free $59 ring. I recommend uh, the Stunner ring. And that's, put that, that that's the one I like. Put it in the cart with the trophy, put in the code. Yep. It will be free. Fantasychamps.com. Never not working. Presented by Head and Shoulders, Scalp Shield Technology. Available at Walmart. Another year of never not working. Another year of deep diving some fantasy football information, trying to inform, illuminate. Uh, it's It's been a really fun year. It's been interesting going through some of these advanced metrics. Today we're going to just take a look at, uh, kind of take a look back at the first and second half of the season and see, look at wide receivers, look at target share, target percentage in the first half versus the second half, and see who some of the movers and shakers are. Uh, in the first half of the year, let's go through the improvements, I should say. In the first half of the year, you had Christian Watson that went from, he had an 8.4% target share through the first eight weeks of the season. Basically an irrelevant fantasy football player constantly hurt. Mm -hmm. When he was out there, he was irrelevant. In the second half of the year, he is the biggest mover. 12.8% growth up to 21.2% of the targets from week Weeks 9 through 16. Christian Watson, far and away the biggest gainer in target share. But the other uh, top four, Devontae Adams from 27% up to 35.5%. From 27. That's not, a, <laughs> that's not a number you usually go up from. And, uh, you know, you can attribute some of that to the Renfro and Waller situation. Sure. Uh, this was a big one, and it's worth – this one's actually actionable, I think. Actually actionable. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Terry McLaurin, 21.9% weeks 1 through 8, up to 30% weeks 9 through 16. The quarterback change is happening again, but he's he's gone up 8.1%, and the question now, healthy Jahan Dotson, change to Carson Wentz, are we going to be back towards the 20% number? Yes, I believe we I believe we are. I mean, when, when Carson Wentz was the quarterback, it was – there was such a clear change when Heineke took over that he was hyper-targeting – uh, Terry McLaurin, and I think going backwards with Dotson back out there, I don't see why Carson Wentz would not do what he was doing, why he would, like, change coming back. Yeah, I mean, in, in the, the fantasy finishes, they were, correla they were corollary to those numbers where the first six weeks he had one finish in the top 24. Week 7 through 16, he's the wide receiver 11. So this was, like, very, very – Good for your lineup mm -hmm. or very bad? Amon Ross St. Brown from 24.8% up to 32.2%. That's 7.4% increase. And Zay Jones from 20 to 25. They had to find something to do with those DeAndre Swift targets. Yeah, they did. They did. They don't want to give them. No. Give them the old He DeAndre. doesn't need them. Uh, so Slash those, dessert. Those were the big movers in a positive direction. 
the target share fallers in the second half. I mean, all of these really uh, Boston. Yeah, I would say most of these you felt in a big way in fantasy. Curtis Samuel from nineteen percent down to twelve percent. You Which, definitely noticed that because in the beginning of the year there was chatter about it every week start category for Curtis Samuel, which, which is could get better with Carson Wentz. Are we back on Curtis Samuel now that Carson Wentz is the starting quarterback for the Manders? Only as a nasty boy. Yeah, it it feels like it, but it's a little like I don't know. One pit's clean. Like it's not the nastiest of the nasty. There are there is a process <laughs> for getting you to believe that Curtis Samuel should be. Usable. I mean, you got to have a process for any of the nasty boys to, to say that they're usable. But I, I, I think I think he qualifies as a delusion. Nasty boy. Usually fits yeah, in there. I, I think he qualifies. Uh, I will say this: if if Antonio Gibson is gone, it they're going to give him more carries and probably some more manufactured I mean, kind of running through screens. Is it a coincidence that uh, Curtis Samuel this past week against San Francisco was a top twenty wide receiver and Carson Wentz? Played what half that game or so? We'll find out. <laughs> Mike Williams from nineteen point three percent down to just thirteen point two percent over the back half of the year. That's a six percent decrease. It hasn't been. We haven't seen the Mike Williams of the first half again. And we've seen Keenan Allen just soaking up everything. I I think he's had fourteen targets in like three of his last five games. I'll, I'll look that up. But it, it's, Keenan Allen's been redonk. Adam <laughs> Adam Thielen, you felt this for sure, 20% down to 15%. Uh, not just K.J. Osborne, it's more T.J. Hawkinson. Jacoby Myers from 23% to oh, 18%. Man. He is – it's been re a really, really disappointing downfall for, for, for Jacoby. Now, this one is uh, – does not really matter, but C.D. Lamb has actually seen a 3.9% decrease, but they've been more valuable. The quality of Dak throwing you the football. He was getting all the targets in the Cooper Rush zone, but 26.4% is where he's at over the back half. That's amazing. And the weapons have returned. He's averaging 1.98 fantasy points per target. That is better better than Jefferson and Tyreek. So when, when CeeDee Lamb's getting targeted right now, and he's getting targeted 26.4% of the time, cool. It's great. Cool, cool, cool. You're playing against Mr. <laughs> uh, yes, CeeDee Lamb. Yes, I am. And I did verify uh, three of the last four games for Keenan Allen, he has had 14 targets. His last three games, he would be on a 175 reception pace. Making up for lost time. Yeah. All right. So uh, that is it for Never Not Working. You can get up to 100% dandruff protection. That is Never Not Working with Head & Shoulders Scalp Shield technology. Available at Walmart.com. Use it every time you shampoo and see the difference. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. I ranted on Josh McDaniels yesterday on Spotify Live, our final party room of the year. The Raiders have decided to bench Derek Carr for the final two games. They're starting Jarrett Stidham. Carr is now, this morning, said he will be away from the team as to not be a distraction. The betting line in the beginning of the week was San Francisco minus five and a half. Now it's San Francisco minus 10. This this is not... Uh, what's the opposite of dysfunction? Function? <laughs> yeah, this is not function. This is a broken think, team. Yeah, I think that was it. Just take the prefix off. No, it's not that, but <laughs> I, I'm going to just say it. Look, I don't like Josh McDaniels. I think he's a bad coach. I think uh, I think the Devontae Adams storyline, not just for the remainder of this year, which is super important, but also in Dynasty, is something to monitor. They're going to try and either cut or trade Derek Carr. Most likely, I'd say very likely. Part of this equation has been to guarantee he doesn't get injured and guarantee $40 million. Oh, yeah, they're, they're moving on. I believe he will be traded. And so... You know, Devontae Adams came out and said the only reason he came to the Raiders is for Derek Carr. <laughs> so there's a chance he demands out, and we've yeah. seen it as yeah. as early as last year. Yeah, the, the Devontae Recently. Adams human part of this story is I, it, worth worth following. Of You force your way out of Green Bay to go play with your college quarterback, uh, clearly a someone that is still a good friend of yours. I mean, I... Maybe wanted to get out of the winter, get down to you know some some sun, play indoors. 
But Derek Carr being such a huge piece of that puzzle and then signing the the new contract is it, like how did management had to know that something was going to come up with Devontae Adams and whether they feel like they can control the situation or they have a plan in store for trying to recuperate some of the, the, the draft picks that they sent away to get him will be fascinating for the offseason. Right now, it seems like Devontae Adams is going to play. Right. Um, we don't have indications other than a, one comment from Josh McDaniels about giving some veterans some time off. Uh, he it's, seems like he's going to make the best of it, but this is one situation to monitor. If they are truly, if 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 McDaniel's is has any amount of truth in the statement of we're going to evaluate some youth, to evaluate Jared Stidham, you need to have weapons on the field. You can't just say, well, we're going to evaluate all the youth at the exact same time, or it's going to be a complete disaster. You, I feel like Adams needs to be on the field, and this is there. I don't have any inside information. This is just my current hunch of the situation. I think that Adams plays most of the game, and if anyone's snaps are are scaled back, it would be Josh Jacobs to take a look at, because uh, he's not coming back to the team next year. His contract is done. They, I guess you could technically franchise him, but you drafted uh, Zamir White, I believe, in the fourth round. You want to see, does he have any juice to be your lead running back this next year? So again, I don't have, the, the nothing on Twitter is telling me that. That's just kind of my overall take of the situation Jason why don't you break down Austin Eckler's situation here he missed uh he missed practice it wasn't a real practice but his uh official you know uh what do they call it the like, designation yeah the 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 mock if we would have practiced right. he would have been a limited participant listed with a knee injury um on the practice report now it that's not something like you know a lot of a lot of guys they just miss every Wednesday, and you don't worry about it. It's a day of rest, and usually those are running backs, so no worries, except Austin Eckler has not missed Wednesday practices. He hasn't been on the injury report for anything um, since week nine, uh, dealing with an abdominal issue. Now, you go back, and I, I tweeted this out, there's, a, there's his last play of the game where he clearly gets up uh, a little wonky and uh, is hobbled, and so the you know, the correlation from seeing him looking injured and then being listed for the first time with a knee injury is frightening for managers who have Austin Eckler, one, you know, one of the best uh, assets in fantasy and one of the best running backs in the NFL. That's a terrifying proposition. I think you should pick up Joshua Kelly to make sure you have the insurance. But I believe Austin Eckler is playing. Um, you know, he is a fantasy lover. Um, he and, he and a fantasy giver. He has a fantasy podcast. He's been on our show several times. He knows what week 17 is. Obviously, he's a human being. <laughs> he does. He's a human being. If his knee is, it can't yeah, the go. The playoffs matter a lot more to him. He can't go. Sure. Oh, he, I know they do. And he wants a Super Bowl. And I, I, Austin, I hope you get a Super Bowl. But I think he's out. But I want a Super Bowl. But I want one first. <laughs> Let's both get one. He... He, I, he, Look, I believe I, he is out on. He will be on the field in Week 17, and um, his attitude and what he's been talking about would be very surprising to me if he is significantly injured to the point of not being able to go. Ken Walker was listed as DMP. They're managing reps. He should be out there. Tyler Lockett did not practice. Caught passes with no pain. His head coach assumed he'd be listed as practice. Yeah, yeah, the, the, but he was listed as DNP. The so. reason this is news is because Pete Carroll told us that Tyler Lockett practiced in full, and then the website, uh, the official statement from the team was he did not. It seems like he will play. Yes, it does seem that way. It's just really it's just more peach cobbler up to his nonsense. Yeah, Aaron Jones limited with the knee and ankle. Christian Watson did not practice Wednesday mm. due to the hip. Mm. So we'll talk about those in the matchups. Jerry Judy. Briefly left practice due to an ankle injury. Hooray. He came back. J.K. Dobbins said his right leg is, quote, <laughs> still super fast, but his left leg is lagging behind. And this is funny in and of itself. The but when you watch so him play, yeah. it looks like his left leg is dragging behind him. It's so So funny. somehow he's running with one leg. And that, but, but Andy. That leg he's running with is super, super fast. fast. It's the leg itself. That is one fast leg. If I'm watching film, I'm like, dude, look at that right leg. That's super fast. It's an amazing quote. 
Uh, Derrick Henry listed as doubtful <laughs> for tonight. He won't play. Oh. And reports right now are that Hassan Haskins is in line for a big role in the Thursday night game. Let's get nasty. Against the Cowboys. Yeah. Are you uh, playing him? A Dino Jr. We, we don't are, have a choice. We are playing the nasty man. Haskins is in our lineup. Not in League of Records, so... Uh, but yeah, I will it's be a reading. dynasty. It's a dynasty squad, everybody, and the, our options are Hassan Haskins. play Haskins or or just don't play another player. <laughs> every every year, it's the same story. <laughs> Tony Pollard very much in doubt for Thursday night's game. If it's close, Pollard will not be out there. That's what the quote was. Uh, it's still going to come down to, to warm ups. Is for from what I'm reading. And the warm up, and by warm ups, they mean when they're out there warming up, they're going to look and see. If Does there's any Titans on or... the other side of the field, then they're going to be like, <laughs> oh, yeah, we can beat those guys with that. You go ahead and sit this one out, Pollard. If Pollard's active, you're playing Pollard? <sighs> I, I th So I, I am no, of the opinion that I if Pollard so. is active, you need to take a look at your options because I would be willing – There, you know, he's not – even though he's been the running back seven, he's been absolutely phenomenal. Um, if I have another good option, you know, if, if Leonard Fournette or Najee Harris um, – you know, Algier, if those guys are out there, I will start those players over Pollard. But I don't think he, if he's active, he's not just like, well, I'm so afraid that I will bench him no matter what. It's, it's really a matter of your options. Any other news breaking this morning, Brooksy? Nothing yet. All right, that was today's news and notes brought to you by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. Fantasy Forecast. The Arizona Cardinals are four and eleven. They take on the five and ten Atlanta Falcons. The DraftKings Sportsbook line here: Atlanta minus three. The over under is forty two. Let's go Falcons! Battle of the Dirty Birds. Arizona currently fourth. Atlanta sixth in the draft order. Arizona's lost five straight. Atlanta games have hit the under six of seven. <laughs> Colt McCoy, Desmond Ritter. Now, you just said something that's really important for fantasy. Colt McCoy is going to be the quarterback, not Trace McSorley. And I can co I collectively hear all DeAndre Hopkins managers go, <gasps> "Yeah, yay. <laughs> yeah, and it's it's actually a little bit stupid. Yeah, it is. Keep Trace McSorley <laughs> out there. Go get that pick. I mean, we know who Colt McCoy already is. So evaluating talent like Trace McSorley for the future – Makes more sense for Arizona, but obviously... He's been evaluated. <laughs> yeah. We saw it. Um, so, Cole McCoy does breathe some life into DeAndre Hopkins. Uh, the The Falcons' defense against the wide receiver position has been really good in the last uh, handful of weeks. But are you back in on Hopkins after yes. the McSorley experience? Yes, 100%. Was pretty scared last week. All systems go. James Conner has been absolutely incredible. He did not practice on Wednesday to due to an illness. It shouldn't affect his weekend status. Since week nine, he's the running back four. He's averaging five targets a game. And Colt McCoy being able to actually move the offense is, I mean, that's touchdown upside for James Conner. So he is a, a must play. Desmond Ritter and company. What do they do against Arizona? Tyler Run Algier has been getting tons of opportunities with Ritter. Yeah, Tyler Algier has been great. I mean, there are two teams in this league that all they want to do is run the ball. The Carolina Panthers and the Atlanta Falcons, they are going to run as much as they are allowed to run by law. And the Cardinals have a lot of uh, legalese saying you can run all day on them. So I think Tyler Algier is a great play. I would start him over a lot of other players. Um, I, I He is... He is not a full, like, must-start, get great players out of your lineup, but he is, of all the questionable guys, I keep tie-breaking his direction when I look at, like, when I start this guy or that guy, this guy or that guy. I, I want Algier in the in the lineups. Tony Pollard is declared active tonight. Do you play him or Tyler Algier? I would go Algier. Okay. I think his opportunity and his talent. Like, he's not yeah, he's an, good. He is not a bad running back you know, a lot of times we'll start bad running backs who just have great opportunities. He's not, you know, Saquon Barkley by any means, but he's a talented running back with all the opportunity in a great match. Over Swift against Chicago? Yes. Over Pacheco against Denver? Yes. Okay. Drake London, the last three weeks, 12 targets, 11 targets, 9 targets, seems to be the go-to receiver, as he should be, for Desmond Ritter when Ritter uh, 
finally gets the opportunity to throw the football. Drake London in your lineups. Yep. Okay. Uh, Patterson, are we seeing the end of Cordero Patterson? Yep. <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah. this was a one-year deal, right? And so I don't believe he's under contract for another season. Correct. So, And, and he's getting up there in age. He, to me, he is a, uh, you know, he's basically a nasty boy where you can see an option here. He he has a nose for the end zone. They get down around the five. He could absolutely fall in there, save his day uh, via a touchdown. I mean, I that is a realistic output. But he is clearly supplanted as far as backfield touches by Algier. You expect Cordero to get about 10 opportunities to touch the ball in this game. And that's not enough for me to be confident putting him in, but you know, a break glass situation where you're looking at what player can get a touchdown. He's, he's up there. And to be clear, Kyle's a liar. Boston. <laughs> What's the truth, Kyle? He actually is under contract next year, but they'll cut him cause he's old. Okay. Well, yeah, they can get out of the contract pretty easily. Just I, one I, year to Kyle. I don't know that we've seen no, the end of Patterson's career, but his, the career of him being the primary running back. I think that's gone. Greg Dortch, you messing around with Greg Dortch? No. Personally, 10 for 98 last week? I am not. I think that was a product of Trace McSorley, and then, then that leads to a different conversation of what do you do with Hollywood Brown where we got you know, it's just weird reporting uh, out of Arizona last week that he was banged up. That's why his snaps were, were down. I mean, you know, since back from the injury, 97, 96, 89% of the snaps drops all the way down to 66%. So that, that kind of checks out. But then there was this story that he was being punished by head coach Cliff Kingsbury because he had happened to be late for a meeting, it, which that that happens in the NFL. When guys guys get disciplined, they lose some, some playing time. But it's all weird of, like, it, I think that my confidence for Hollywood would, would be back this week playing as, you know, a wide receiver three-ish against the Falcons, and I would – I wouldn't I think, chase Dorch. I think the Dorch is a good play. Do you? Really? Yeah. I mean, the last time we saw him out on the field with any significant time was with Cole McCoy. He was the wide receiver 12. He had nine catches, 103 yards, and then he got hurt. And But he played with McCoy. And I think McCoy, because he gets the ball out of his hands so quickly, is going, you know, you don't have Zach Ertz in this offense anymore. Obviously, Hopkins will get his targets, but I think the Dorch, I mean, you're talking about the last two times we've seen him, he's a top 12 wide receiver. You don't uh, have Rondale Moore. A.J. Green also got knocked out of the game. Yeah. I think he was at 26%. So A.J. Green does not concern me. You're talking about the well, Rondale Moore, well, Greg Dortch rule. A.J. Green, it, it, uh, to me, is the concern because yeah. the previous two weeks, Dortch was active. Dortch just played like 9% of snaps while A.J. Green was playing 60% of snaps. So they made the change. I don't know if it was injury or if they uh, – because I, I haven't heard of an actual injury for A.J. Green. I okay. think they just played Dorch over him, um, which they should be doing. He's a he's a better player than this version of A.J. Green. But that's that's my concern with playing Dorch is I don't know that we're guaranteed the snaps on the field. He If if I knew for sure he's out there 80% of snaps, I'd be like, yeah, play him. That That's my concern too. I, I think we'll see the Dorch out on the field sure. for 80% of snaps. I don't – understand why this team would put the corpse of A.J. Green out there at this point in the season. Because you're, you're, you're thinking rationally, man. Um, Careful. Yeah, well, I'm trying to find a chance no, for a nasty boy to win me a week. And I agree with you that if if I know for sure that Dorch, they'll be running the three wide and Dorch will be in the slot, then I'm interested as as, as a desperation play. But Oh, now you're interested. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, but that's, I don't know that at this point of the recording, I don't feel like I have the guarantee that that's what the, the rotation will be. That's fine. I just want to highlight op the possibilities for yes, that for player. Sure. Quick break back with another matchup. The losers of eight straight Chicago bears, three and 12 taking on the seven and eight Detroit Lions. In Losing De with style though. In Detroit. DraftKings Sportsbook line, Detroit minus six, over-under is 52. No team has accomplished a more exciting 3-12 and season than the Bears because there's great opportunity ahead for them. Yeah, because Justin Fields. Yeah, baby. He's awesome. He is, uh, he's been unlocked as a mobile rushing quarterback. 
See other Josh teams, Allen talking about him? I did not. What yeah, did Josh Allen just, have to say? It was just it was a very, very uh, flattering quote from him of just saying like this kid is the real deal, and I'm excited to watch if, if watch they his could, career. If in this off season they could go out and get their Stephon Diggs because they've got money, they've got draft capital, they've got they a got lot him. of Chase Claypool, mm-hmm. <laughs> second round draft pick they gave up. But regardless of that, if they can go get a legit number one wide receiver for him uh, via trade uh, or otherwise, I think sky's the limit. But for this week, I'm. I mean, I want pieces in this game. Jared Goff in a dome and at home has mm-hmm. been unbelievably good. He's been a phenomenal quarterback. The amount of points that the Detroit Lions putting are putting up are great. Everyone could do whatever you want against the Bears since they, uh, you know, kind of traded away most of their defensive pieces. Roquan Smith they got rid of. And then the the Bears, because no one can stop Justin Fields' legs, are keeping up. It, it, losing, but keeping up with everyone. I, I just love the fantasy options here 52 point over under and you know i i assume it goes over i'm a little nervous about justin fields in this matchup he only had 11 rushing yards last week and he is consistently limping off the field with ailments when i've seen some like if you're choosing between Goff and justin fields in this game oh that's a tough i'm one. playing jared Goff. like i have my concerns about justin fields health uh there have been injuries you know chase claypool is not out there darnell mooney is gone like these were players that were small parts in Justin Fields' passing success previously in the year. Mooney a bigger part, Claypool a small part, but was supposed to be a big part. Um, I have my concerns about Fields and what this team will do if he gets banged up in this game because why would you risk him? Why put him on the line when your best situation is losing? I, I, I totally understand the risks, and for me personally – I'm willing to accept those risks to get what Justin Fields can give me for fantasy football. The 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 decision with Jared Goff, I think that one is that one's tough because Jared Goff feels much much safer and has it has the huge ceiling this week. So I don't mind that pivot, but I think for you the know, rushing I'll, last week didn't concern you. Uh, no, Seven for eleven. No, it's it's definitely something that you need to at least look at. Uh, but still played, you know, the majority of the game. The, the way that the team has talked about, no, Justin Fields, he's he's good to go. We're, he's going to play. They've given no implications that they are considering shutting him down. Now, maybe that's just coach speak. Uh, but you know, tougher matchup against Buffalo. I I think that and it was that in Fields the- would be. Yeah, and it was like they had it was freezing, right? Yeah, it was in the rain and and freezing, and uh, you know he had seven rushing attempts. You know, uh, a couple weeks before he had six rushing attempts, ended up with seventy one yards. Yeah. It's just does he break that big play? There's no guarantee, and obviously uh, against Buffalo, m- more difficult to do it. I love both of these quarterbacks. If I had to play one of them, I do think I go golf, but that's not a that's not a knock on Fields to me. Uh, okay. They are banged up at wide receiver. Like they're even uh, even their secondary options. Dante Pettis has an ankle injury. Equinemius St. Brown isn't practicing. Claypool doesn't practice. Uh, right now, it's Justin Fields and the running backs and Cole Komet. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you take the take it fast and then you get there fast and then you take it slow. <laughs> on the on the Lions side, Jared Goff. We've talked about a lot this week. Yep. Jamal Williams is not on the injury report. The is Jamal Williams a sneaky potential fantasy he, winner? I yeah, I think we're back to the point of like if you're going to bet on the Jamal Williams touchdown, I think this is a good week to do it. Uh he's not been someone I've wanted to play the last couple of weeks, but I think this matchup with the over under suggests that you'll have an opportunity or two. DJ Chark top 24 3 of the last 4 weeks at home, high over under. DJ Chark or someone like Jahan Dotson against Cleveland. Ooh, um, I, 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 this is not anti Jahan Dotson. He's been great, but I really do like DJ Chark this week. Uh, the the matchup, the over under, the environment at home in this dome. I mean, DJ Chark has been really, really good. You look at his last four games: hundred and eight yards, ninety four yards, ninety eight yards, and three of those four. Mm-hmm. Uh, he can obviously dud because he's kind of a big play guy, but if you want to take a game where you expect some big play opportunity uh, to happen, this this matchup and uh, team implied total, it hits the mark for me. I, I like DJ Chark. He's one of my favorite uh, kind of waiver wire 
level in some areas or bench player that can start in championship games. Denver's 4-11. and They take on the 12-3 and Kansas City Chiefs. Chiefs are 12.5-point favorites on the DraftKings Sportsbook. The over-under is 45. This, it's not going to be Russell Wilson, Patrick Mahomes battling it out for a division. No, um, it's not. Wow, Russ was the most number of preseason bets from the public for MVP, and he is the worst quarterback in football. <laughs> oh, man. Kansas City beat him 34-28 to in week 14. This was the best game Russ had, mm -hmm. but I don't think that – I think that's just coincidence at this point. Yeah, I'm not chasing. Yeah, not at all. I, I, We cannot recommend that you play someone who's been as putrid as Russell Wilson. I can see the output where he has a good game. Um, you know, he was the quarterback three against Kansas City. That was his only real good game, uh, or the second good game of the season for him. And so that, that could happen again. You fired your head coach, maybe – some of that does improve the situation, but regardless of all the avenues that you can don't play him. see, don't play him. Don't, yeah. I mean, you, you his if, fantasy finish. Other than that one, he hasn't been in the top twenty. Yeah, no. It's it, it, if you know the future and you know he does it, <laughs> then you can play him. I, I it, but we can't recommend. Can that. you play any Broncos this week? Because Jerry Judy with being banged up, that's enough for me to be concerned. Where like you have options that are on the Judy level, most likely. DJ Chark, I'd play over Jerry Judy. Jahan Dotson, I'd play over Jerry Judy. Yeah, there's he's the, he's not a must bench, but there are there are certain players who are I, I view as like a similar tier, like your the guys you laid out, Andy. That I would probably for safety's uh, sake because of the injury, uh, you can wait on more news. Maybe he gets full practice in today and tomorrow, and like oh, Judy's good to go. But it should be part of your process this weekend yeah assuming he is full practice which is considering he came back to the practice when right. he left for a minute I'm not worried or off of Jerry Judy I do think that even with a bad Russ he can get the job done you look at what he's done in the last three weeks 117 yards 76 yards 73 yards uh Sutton was back this last week I, I'm fine playing Jerry Judy I think the matchup is is fine here and he, he to me is not someone that I'm looking to bench I mean, I, I'm playing Mike Evans. I would much rather have Jerry Judy. Isaiah Pacheco, the last two weeks had opportunities, didn't really deliver in a big way. He was fine. 36 at the running back position, then 26 last week. Broncos struggle against running backs. McKinnon and Pacheco in your lineup? Yep. No, Which they, one do you prefer? Um, I assume it's McKinnon. It, right now it's got to be McKinnon. He, the pass-catching role that they're using him in and setting him up where he can just run is is really worked out. The touchdowns have gone his way, but both are both are good options. I mean, you look at Pacheco, 14-15, 13-14, 22-15, 16. Those are the carries he's getting uh, in his game log going back. You, you love to have that kind of opportunity. Are we benching Juju? No. No, you can play. I would bench him. Really? Yeah, for sure. Why? Why is that? That's well, a tough matchup for one. Yeah, he struggled. He's had he's had little uh, weeks here and there, but Denver is a it's a top five team against wide receivers. But like nine for seventy four and a touchdown on eleven targets the last time they played this team. Yeah, or three for twenty seven is going to sink your championship week last week against Seattle, which is uh, a great matchup. Yeah, for for me, I I don't see him as a must bench. He's a flex level option. But ironically, across the field, Jerry Judy versus Juju, I think there's um. You know, that's a question. That's like the same similar level players in this matchup. And I would rather go with Jerry Judy simply because there's there's just so many, op, you know, it's it's pick your poison for Kansas City. This game, the reason Judy and Juju had huge weeks <clears throat> last time they played was it was 34 to 28. That's not prescriptive for this game. I mean, Vegas has it at 29 to 16. So. You don't have a running game right now in Denver, right? It's worse than it was three weeks ago. And so I would be concerned that the first couple scores happen and you're not, if you're not involving Juju there, he could be risky. Uh, you know, that's just my take. Yeah. Juju. The the running game, speaking of the running game for the, the Denver Broncos, I think this could be an important one for fantasy. You saw Latavius Murray have a stretch of games where there was so much opportunity you know, 21, 14, 21, 13, 25, a lot of opportunity given his direction um, where he sucks. The <laughs> offense sucks. 
but he was okay for fantasy. Was, you know, if if you need to go out there and you know get around ten points, he was pretty consistent. Then he got banged up. Yeah. And now you're worried if for some reason they shelve him and 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 you know yes, if he sir. doesn't play this week. So if he plays, I'm not really excited. I don't want to play Latavius Murray. But if he doesn't play. No. Yeah. I I I do think that the nasty. amount of opportunities I'm not getting nasty for with Chase Den Edmonds. <laughs> I'm not getting nasty with Denver. I'm not going to play. I want nasty players on with opportunities on a team that can score. Well, then they're usually not nasty. Yeah. Usually those are good options, but I'm <laughs> I'm wanting the 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 fact that Kansas City plays fast. Uh you know, usually there's there's enough of your uh you know, your talented skill position players to have decent fantasy games against Kansas City just because of game script. So, uh, I mean, I assume Latavius Murray is going to play at this point in time. He didn't practice on Wednesday. I don't have an update from there. But if he's out, I think you've got a it, – it's not Marlon Mack. It's Chase Edmonds. He came in and ran yeah. ahead of Marlon Mack. That's, that's the takeaway here. Travis Kelsey playing. Yep. Please do monstrous things, Kelsey. 40 fantasy points. That's what I'm looking for. Why is that? Because Mike and I have them against Kyle. It's uh, we haven't really brought up our championship match is against the the Borgogan over there, the mm -hmm. enemy, the Deuce, and he's a heavy favorite. Yeah, he is. <laughs> Miami's eight and seven. They take on the New England Patriots at seven and eight. Ooh. The DraftKings Sportsbook line: New England minus three. The over the over under is forty one. Uh, I expect New England to handle their business in this one. Miami starting Teddy Bridgewater. They're on a downward spiral right now. It's not to say they couldn't steal this game, but it's obviously a crucial one. It will even up the records if New England wins it. And, you know, New England's the last AFC team out right now. Miami's the last AFC team in. Games in Foxborough. Both teams are struggling. Sure. Do you believe that, uh, you know, what are you? how are you adjusting expectations for Miami without Tua? So I am not adjusting my Tyreek Hill expectations at all. I think he's going to have a phenomenal game. If you look at the two, Teddy Bridgewater has had two games where he played about 60% of the snaps. In those games, those were Tyreek Hill target monstrous games. Uh, he, he just looks Tyreek Hill's way because he knows he is the number one option. He's the best and, and, and or because Teddy Bridgewater is the quarterback, they are scheming it quick and easy to Tyreek Hill. And Tyreek Hill has a pretty good history against New England. I know they're a great defense and they try to take away your number one option, but in games he's played against New England, 94 yards, 64 and a touchdown, 62, 142 and three, 133 and one. He's, he's just beat the crap out of them. So the fact that we've seen two games of Teddy hyper targeting Tyreek, Tyreek beating them, I'm not adjusting expectations there. I do adjust Jalen Waddle down a little bit, but he's still someone that has so much talent. You're not benching Jalen Waddle. You just have to say I'm I'm seeing him more like you know hoping for twelve fantasy points. What are you doing with the running backs of Mostert? Two weeks ago with no Jeff Wilson was fantastic against the Bills. Jeff Wilson comes back. The snaps immediately flip back to Jeff Wilson as the one at least who's on the field more. It, you're, it's you know, pretty Mostert close. Mostert lost a fumble last week, too. Yeah, so you feel like he got punished? I just don't. I, you I, just – what 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 seems to be happening is, is every time somebody has a good game, the next week people like that player. Yeah, sure. And that just seems like not the way to go here. I think I look at them identically in terms of start opportunities. I'm Raheem out. Mostert can get a bigger play. You're out on both. I'm out on both. Like, for instance, and this will sound super gross – but if I had these two guys and I had Hassan Haskins, I'm not saying that the, like the, the number one scoring running back will probably be one of these Miami Dolphins players, but you could get just absolute nothing from, if you choose the roulette wheel wrong against the New England Patriots, who are not a great, you know, defense to run against anyways, I want the more sure volume kind of get points from, if you've got this level of running back, I want to try to get, 10 fantasy points, get that position out, focus elsewhere. To me, you're just you're gambling too much with trying to predict who could get a large workload against a tough matchup, but they might not. Yeah, I mean, Jeff Wilson last week, yeah, he scored, but he was 9 for 37. I mean, right. that's nothing and, to be... And Teddy's in, so you're you know, you're know at a backup quarterback situation. Probably not bad advice there. Ramondre, what's the confidence level on oh, Ramondre? My, you, 
Uh, My you, confidence is high. Yeah, I'm, I'm saying that I'm playing him regardless of if if you got through with Ramadre last week, that was a feat in, I did. in itself. Yeah, no, I, I didn't either. So I don't. I can't answer this question. What I'm doing with my team because my team is not playing for uh, for first place. But if I were through, I would do my best to kiss and make up and forgive him and say you're you're still the guy. Last week was very bizarre, especially trailing and not getting Stevenson the dump off work that he had been receiving for the entirety of the season. Well, he got five targets in the but, game. He yeah, just but it's it's still it like with with the game script going the way it was, this seemed like this is a game that Ramondre Stevenson is going to get eight plus targets. Yeah, he sucked. I mean, it was yes. it was as bad a game as you could possibly get from a player playing ninety one percent of snaps at running back. You can't imagine that someone who's been as good as he has been plays ninety one percent of snaps and finishes the game with two point three fantasy points. That's awful. He fumbled twice in this game. It was a catastrophe. He's just been too doggone good, too involved. The opportunity. I'm not moving on from a player because he has one bad game. The passing game work is very concerning. Agreed. Because it wasn't just last week. Two for two, two for negative four, two for three. That is frustrating, and that's yeah. where you've had bottoms that you hadn't seen from Ramondre in uh, in a while. And, and, you know, you don't know how much the ankle is a concern because the Raiders, you don't need your ankles to run on the <laughs> on the Raiders. So um, it seems, they're both limited, Ramondre and Damian Harris. I would expect the same situation, Ramondre and Harris out. Mm -hmm. But if what if Harris is active? Does that change your doesn't, equation? Doesn't because change of the, it for me at, at all. No, no, even with the the trust problems. I mean, the lateral and the fumbles and uh, the, the running back something coach, to be worried about with. The running backs coach came out, and it, I mean, obviously he's not the necessarily the one that makes the call here. If Belichick wanted to sit him down, then that's his choice. But he came out after the game, uh, shared full confidence in him. Um, if he comes out and fumbles again, obviously that that's a risk. But I I just cannot imagine. You know, you brought up oh he, he, two catches for negative four yards uh, the week prior. He was the running back four that week. He was awesome. Like uh, the the passing work hasn't been there. But I mean his fantasy finishes. He hasn't not been a top twenty four running back since week two. If you take out the game he got injured and played twenty percent of the game, so I'm I'm in on Ramon and last week, right? Well, uh, yes, yes yeah. obviously the, the before I last mean, week. Before the this really bad game, yes, that's what I was saying. Colts are four ten and one. The Giants are eight six and one. The DraftKings sportsbook line is New York minus six. The over under is thirty eight. Can you play a, a in in Indianapolis Indianapolis <laughs> Colts? Uh, yeah. I mean, like Pittman gets a target share. What was his actual line from this past week? Let me pull that up. It was seven four. seven targets, so four for thirty nine. Oh man, I mean the the matchup at least is not scary, but against the Giants who have have totally fallen apart. But Nick Foles is so bad; he he should not be the quarterback of this team. What I'm concerned. So I I know you know I'm anti Zach Moss, but I also recognize that the opportunities are going to go his way, and that the matchup is okay you know if you had someone like a son haskins versus i think we brought this up earlier in the week i know how i would answer this but would you guys rather play zach moss or hassan haskins uh, i think that's the kind of category that moss is in do you see him in that tier of opportunity i'd play haskins i would too michael pittman <laughs> i was i'm trying not to play any colts if i can saquon barkley I would love to play yep. Saquon Barkley. Yeah, that sounds that's much better than the Colts. Delicious. Goals. Darius Slayton, Isaiah Hodgins. Put them in order. Uh, Darius Slayton, Isaiah Hodgins. Yeah, I stink. Uh, I still think I, I go stink? that way. I yeah. stink. Yeah, I stink. Yeah. I would like to bench these guys this week. Um, you know, they're an NFL team that is projected to win. Some wide receiver is going to have a decent game here, but the over under is only thirty eight points. I expect them to finish with a W sub you know like around 20 points this isn't a game juju where they're gonna, hodgins juju jerry judy both of those guys over over dorch the, or hodgins that's interesting i think i i think i go 
Dortch simply because the chance of either of these games turning into a shootout, an unexpected higher scoring game, I just can't see that with Nick Foles here. I'm very comfortable with Hodgins in this game. Would you take him ahead of Slayton? Yes. Yeah, if I was in a standard league, I'd go Slayton, but otherwise I would go Hodgins half and full. Just I feel like he's pretty safe. Uh, their, their implied point total is 26 points in there. I think I'll be involved yeah, that, in that. that's still fine. Um, Daniel Jones. Daniel Jones is to me is is he's better than the sum of his weapons because he runs the ball. So if you're looking for, but you'd play Minshew over him. I would play Minshew over him, but I do think Daniel Jones is a fine option if you if if he's your your option out there. I mean, three of his last four games he's been a quarterback one because he runs the ball. Giants defense or Jacksonville's defense? Giants. Oh, I love the Giants defense. The New York, uh, the New Orleans Saints, six and nine, taking on the thirteen and two Philadelphia Eagles. DraftKings sportsbook line is Philadelphia minus five and a half. The over under is forty three and a half. Couple of elite pass defenses. I mean, if you look on the year, the Saints defense has been really, really good, stopping wide receivers and tight ends. Yeah, uh, they've been generous to the running back position, but right now, Miles Sanders' confidence is at an all time low. So how do you see this game breaking down on the Philadelphia side of the football? We had, uh, I think A.J. Brown was, would, uh, was he limited yesterday again? I will check. I saw him move to questionable. Take Perfect. a peek. But <laughs> Devontae Smith, A.J. Brown, too good to sit, right? Absolutely. Miles Sanders didn't practice on Wednesday. Oh, my gosh. You know, we <laughs> talked about the fact you can run on the Saints, but can you run on the Saints with Miles Sanders? Miles Sanders, the last two weeks, it's been bad. Uh, at least the game against Dallas was 22 opportunities. Not seeing targets, though, uh, you know, in really since the bye week. He's, he's not involved in the passing game very much. Three targets is his high. He hit that twice. I, I mean, I think you can do worse than Miles Sanders because his upside is a multi-touchdown week winning performance. So I'm not going... Uh, like Hassan Haskins seems to be our line of like the 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 nasty running backs that you would play over certain players. I would play Sanders easily over Haskins. Dallas Goddard, ninety four percent of snaps last week, three for sixty seven. Right back in your lineup. Yep. Yeah. There's very few. Taysom Hill or Goddard. I would go Goddard. There. Goddard has the athleticism to have impactful downfield opportunities. Taysom Hill, top twelve tight end, and four. Of the last five weeks outside of Goddard, where do you put Hill this week against Philly? They're eighth against tight ends on the year. Um, Jason, uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, Taysom Hill to me, uh, I've I've got him uh, actually one spot behind Dallas Goddard at tight end nine right now. Andy Dalton plays quarterback for the Saints. He does. He has no one to throw it to. Is Rashid Shahid a nasty boy? You would you would consider. That's he'll play probably a hundred percent of snaps. The or last close to it, the last I saw, Chris Olave was back at practice. He was limited on Wednesday. If Olave plays, I am not excited about starting Rashid Shahid. I think he's a talented enough player to look his way. Maybe throw him in a DraftKings lineup. But we've mentioned some other wide receivers. I would I would play of ahead of Shahid. Alvin Kamara didn't practice on Wednesday. Nick Underhill, very trusted beat writer out of New Orleans doesn't worry about his availability are you worried about him in general like is this going to be the capstone of a disappointing season for Alvin Kamara going up against the Philly defense uh probably but the opportunities at least have been there last two weeks 23 and 24 so Algier Kamara. volume is still there oh man oh, oh man. that's so stupid how dare you Andy Algier or Kamara Oh, well, Mike, they, the question was to you. <laughs> oh, my gosh. They're they're pretty close. So right now, I, Kamara, right? right now, Tyler Algier is running back 22 for me. Kamara is running back 17. Yeah, I think it's Kamara. Oh, I don't know. It, it takes it takes gumption here to like. I, I feel it, like, yeah, this is we, we we've recently been talking about, you know, the 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 name equity that these players have. I think the process truly says is Tyler Algier. I, it is, that's a big emotional hurdle to cover. 
and step over in your in your championship week, I think it's the right play to go with Algier over Kamara. I I at the, at the end of the week, <laughs> one, at the end of this week, one it, of these Andy two players will have more fantasy points silent. than the other. I would still lean the Kamara side. Who was the running back eight last week? Twenty three opportunities, twenty four opportunities the last two games at Philly. They started the year super strong against the run, but they're they're okay. You know they're. They're not a lockdown defense, so I would Since still week lean. Week seven, Arizona. The, oh, I know, is the best matchup for running back. I'm playing oh. Algier. Yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Carolina six and nine. Tampa Bay seven and eight. For the division. Yeah, you don't talk about nasty boys. Talk about a nasty <laughs> game. I mean, it's just a nasty game. Scrapping and clawing. DraftKings sportsbook line: Tampa minus three. Over unders forty. Divisional game. Everything on the line. Must win for Carolina. Must win for Tampa Bay. Yeah, must win for everybody involved. It's a really important game. I talked about with the Atlanta Falcons matchup. No teams want to run the ball more than the Panthers and the Falcons. The Falcons, uh, I mean, last week against Detroit's uh, running defense that has been shutting people down, Foreman and Hubbard combined for 33 carries basically 300 yards in a touchdown. Uh, so we know what they want to do. Will they be able to do that against T Tampa Bay? And are you happy to start a Deontay Foreman or a Chuba Hubbard? It's brutal. It's a brutal call. That's what they want to do. They want to run the football. They've been able to inflict their or impose their will on opposing defenses throughout the year. This game is... I'll take the under. I mean, I, I think this is just going to be a drag out fight. We know the Tampa Bay is running a Werther's original offense. I mean, it's gross. Check downs. Can check you downs. Bet check downs. On punt attempts? <laughs> Can I take the over on total punts in this game? I mean, this is. Uh, I didn't even know. I, I'd love to say that Tampa Bay is going to take care of their business here. I have no confidence in that whatsoever. They're 28th in points scored. You know, they have one game with more than 23 points. Their their implied total here is 21.8. Sure. But um, I but I like the players on Tampa Bay this week. I I, I, I just, I'm not playing Tom Brady uh compared why to Why do what, you like them? Because the Why Car this week versus all the other weeks? Because the Carolina Panthers are allowing points to those positions like the on the season, they are 27th in schedule adjusted to, against wide receivers, 22 in the past uh, six weeks, 26th against uh, against quarterback. Like uh, Mike Evans, I believe, let me try and find it, the last time that they played uh, uh, was week seven when, when Mike Evans actually had fantasy value. It was 15 targets, nine for 96 in that, that week. Oh, just, let's do it. Please, yeah, buddy. No, I, I'm very – uh, and Chris Godwin, he's seeing just so much volume, averaging 10 targets a game, that he has a very safe PPR floor. And I think that this is the weekend that we finally get the Mike Evans upside. And I'm sitting here trying to decide if yeah. I hit the button. Yeah, I, I I saw the hand go over. Oh, I, I don't I, mind I, that. I'm I have great concern about the pass rush getting to Tom Brady, and we get the exact same thing we've been getting. It's just really broken right now. Sure. Um, Leonard Fournette is so necessary to the offense. The um, utilization is back up. like a truck. And uh, so Fournette, I like Rashad White. He'll have his opportunities, but the area where the Panthers is, are pretty good and have been better of late is stopping the run. This this game's tough, man. This game's really, really tough. And if you, know, if you believe Tampa's going to do enough, then you start looking at DJ Moore and you look at him with Sam Darnold and you know that he's going to be the go-to receiver and you start saying, you know, DJ Moore, DJ Chark. Which sure. DJ are you going with? Yeah, I mean, it's a very I, fair question. Who's uh, playing the beat that you want? The Carolina Panthers have boom bust options, and so if you need to play with a little bit of fire this week in your fantasy championship, uh, I think DJ Moore and Deonta Foreman are players you could put in. Deonta Foreman versus Haskins. Um, I I would lean the Deonta Foreman side simply because we've seen it for all, uh, we've seen it several times we've seen it several times and he can bust he can fall flat on his face tampa can shut him down because that's happened but we also know he can go out there and be a top 5 running back on the week he can go out there and get 
150 rushing yards. He had 165 last week as the running back three. His upside exists. So if you want right. to play with fire. Oh, yes. Andy's almost upset of the week. This one, this one's brutal, but here, here's the what I genuinely believe. I think the Carolina Panthers are a better coach team. And when you talk about a game with everything on the line for both sides, it's it's more on the line for Carolina. Like they have to win to have a chance. Tampa and hit their over. Tampa can still lose this game and win the division. I think they're the better coach team. I think Carolina is playing with more grit, more determination. I think they are. Uh, I'm going to take them. I'm I like take it. them. I like it. And it's uh, it's going to be a very weird thing if we see Tom Brady shrink off the field without a playoff appearance. Yep. And what does he do next year? Yeah. What does he do next? He's free agent, right? Mm-hmm. I bet he plays football. Really? Didn't get divorced for nothing. Oh, man. I hope he doesn't play football. But I, I mean, <laughs> look, I, why wouldn't he? Because he's lost it. Maybe. But okay. I don't think he thinks he's lost it. And I think uh, there's enough coaches out there that say, well, with an offensive line, Tom Brady would be the same guy. Does Tom Brady still like Josh McDaniels? I doubt it. Is, that's I mean that's a that's a fair question. <laughs> uh, it is a fair question. <laughs> I don't think Tom Tom Brady. I'm doubting wants to go to the division with uh, Herbert and Mahomes and the goat. You think the goat doesn't want to go? I think the goat wants the easiest path. <laughs> possible because he's smart there's a reason he took less money than every other quarterback in the league over the last like decade so that there, he could build a team around him he wants to win super bowls Devontae the, adams is pretty attractive over there in uh los angeles like, he's the goat because he knows how to avoid challenge <laughs> sure, darren, that's part darren of it. waller get your uh, gronkowski back yes. i mean you've had rumors you know of I like going a, to the saints it's a chance and you know that makes sense to me because it's like he's in this division he's like this division sucks man i don't want to <laughs> i, I want to leave my team but i don't want to leave this division it's pretty easy we <laughs> suck and we're we're still playoff bound i haven't seen him happy all year oh, i guess that's not true the very end of a bunch of games yes they end up winning yeah in disgusting fashion yeah, like the final 5 minutes of the fourth quarter they're very good all right, the rankings, the start, sit, tool, and the rest of the matchups on tomorrow's show. The rankings and the tool are on the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. Let's jump into our starts. Starts of the week. Go ahead, Mike. All right, I'm kicking it off. It's Justin Fields. Uh, I chalk up last week's bad game weather, Buffalo's defense. He went absolutely bananas against the Lions in Week 10. The quarterback won four total touchdowns, 13 carries for 147 rushing yards. And it's it's the, the matchup with Detroit that also gives me the confidence. The Detroit home games, they're, they're hitting the over in every game except for one. And that game was 53 points. So there is a lot going on up there in Detroit. A lot of offensive output. And this is – it's not like people are looking at Justin Fields going, oh, I'm not playing him, but it's – I, I I think some people need a confidence bump after this past I've, week. I've received a million questions with Fields or Josh Allen, Fields or Jared Goff. Those decisions Josh are Josh Allen, there. I would play over Justin Fields. But Gosh, the questions are out there. But yeah, I, I and I get it. And he's to me is still a top five option of the week. You want me to go? Sure. I figured you had the quarterback on the other side of the field, but I'll go Trevor Lawrence. I'm going to give Spoiler. you a confidence boost. <laughs> I know. Uh, confidence boost here because there is worry with the Jacksonville Jaguars. They're in a similar situation with the Tennessee Titans that this game doesn't really matter. But listening wow. to their head coach talk about it, he said that this game, he was adamant that this game matters, that he's playing his guys. And Trevor Lawrence has just been awesome. I know that the Houston matchup is one we have not really pushed a lot of because, you know, you're, you're up easy, but Houston's been coming to play. Uh, sure. th there's been simulations to have them winning this game that are, you know, considered the the best versions. Lawrence has been on a roll. He's been a top 12 quarterback 10 times this year. That's behind only Mahomes, Allen Hurts, and Burrow That's since wild. week 12. He's the quarterback three. Something has switched in the Jacksonville offense after their week yeah, his 11. Name is Schmevin. Schmevin Schmingram's <laughs> been on fire. Uh, their top 10 in total yards, expected points per pass attempts, and points since that points. Uh, Jacksonville has a 24 point team implied total. Point, 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 point,
Trevor Florence. <laughs> That's my start of the week. Boston. Jared Goff against the uh, the aforementioned big time Justin Field. Look, I've never rooted for Justin Field. I don't have him in any leagues, but I've rooted for him a ton this year. Whenever my quarterback's playing against Chicago, because I love it. I love it when they get up early. I love it when they stay competitive because you need it to fuel the other side of the football. Jared Goff. Uh, these Lions home games, they've been delicious. Mm -hmm. I think golf's going to win some leagues this year, and it's just uh, it's just perfect for championship week. Oh, introducing. All right, my running back start of the week is Brian Robinson of the Washington Manders. He is playing the Cleveland Browns, one of the true run funnel defenses in the NFL, 28th in expected points per rush attempt, 29th in defensive adjusted line yards. Like all the all the super nerd stats, Cleveland is at the absolute bottom, but at the top, running backs against the Cleveland Browns. And Washington wins this year. He's averaging almost 11 fantasy points uh, per game. You have the Antonio Gibson injury. Like if, if Gibson is out, that's just even more opportunity for Brian Robinson. He won't get everything, but he will absolutely get a bump. And that's the way that Washington beats this team is through Brian Robinson. And I am going with running back Tyler Algier, rookie yeah, baby. for the Atlanta Falcons, playing at home against Arizona. Since coming off their Week 14 bye, he was the running back seven on 18 opportunities, 139 rushing yards and a score. Last week was the running back 12, 23 opportunities, 117 total yards, including five targets. He's heating up, and right now, I mean, Arizona's defense, it's one you want to play against. Since week seven, they are dead last in schedule adjusted fantasy points allowed to running backs. Falcons are three and a half point home favorites, and he is the guy when I'm getting all these questions of the middling, unsure players that I keep tie breaking with. So I give my confidence towards Tyler Algier. <laughs> I'm going to go Leonard Fournette. He's back, baby. Uh, when push comes to shove, Brady needs Leonard Fournette on the field. And these must-win games, it's it's revealing the dependency on Fournette. Somehow he's the RB13 on the year. He had 30 opportunities against the Cardinals. Can the Tampa Bay Buccaneers run the football? No, they can't. Will they keep trying with Leonard Fournette? Yep. And is he safe because of the targets? Six a game? Yes, he is. So I think Fournette is a, you know, you look at a player like Haskins versus Fournette, you got to go with the, PPR upside of Leonard sure. Fournette in a must-win type of game. My wide receiver start of the week. I'm doing it. This is silly. It's Mike Evans, baby. <laughs> Taking on the Carolina Panthers. Now was the Third time. time's a charm? Yeah, th this is. Th yes. You do realize this, right? Yeah, oh, I know. Knows. And it was. It was I did it. Yeah, it didn't yep. work well. Mike I did, did it. it. Or Jason did it. Didn't work well. I look And then he pivoted from him in I his own roster. <laughs> I've, Great I've, move. I feel like. Of um, I look Mike Evans. When we started our dynasty league, was my first round pick. Like, you think you have the authority to I'm change just, things? I'm, I'm in tune mm -hmm. with Mike Evans, and I had to make a move. I had to trade him away in the middle of the season. And uh, I mean, I apologize to everyone. I think that that that's what really happened. I didn't trade back for him, but I am feeling this matchup. Uh, look at the the variance has just has bounced the absolute wrong way for Mike Evans because his targets are where they need to be. His receptions, his yards, like everything is where it needs to be except for the touchdowns. He has nine end zone targets on the year. Only three have turned into touchdowns. Look at 2021, 13 end zone targets. Ends the year with 14 total touchdowns. 16 end zone targets in 2020, 13 touchdowns. So it's not in the end zone targets are there. They just have not converted but since week three, Carolina ranks 31st in schedule adjusted fantasy points to the wide receiver position. I think Mike Evans comes through, so I'm doing it. Touchdown guarantee, baby. Oh, man. <laughs> Mike Evans can <laughs> hurt me one more time. <laughs> that's that's the best news of, of the week. Or he can get me to buy a signed jersey <laughs> and frame it and put it up on a wall if he gets me a championship this week. Come on, big Mike. It's tough. It's super tough. I have really wanted to bench him. I benched him last week. It was a great move. I mean, it's been bad for a long, long time. And if you watch the games, I know those metrics are there. But watch the football game. Every pass is off. There's no yeah. – almost There's every no, pass to Mike Evans. There's no chance of the completion. There's no he, continuity. Even though 
Mike Evans doesn't look bad. Like Mike Evans has space. No, I put he's, it on Tom Brady. He's beating his guy. I put it on the offensive line. Whatever it's on, it we, sucks. We, we agree that it's not Mike Evans. Yeah, not really. No, <laughs> no. I de- I mean, Evans always has his drops every year. He certainly would have broken that streak if he caught the football. I mean, yeah, that's a been a couple. Yard I mean, he's drop. had two chances d- deep where he just didn't catch it. But um, man, I mean, it takes stones or. A lot of injuries on your roster, like, sure. like me. I don't have the stones. I just have to. I have to roll Mike Evans, so come on, baby. <laughs> Who's your wide receiver? My wide receiver <laughs> is... Sorry. Do you forget how the show goes? <laughs> yes. Uh, I pulled what we call a Brooks yes. uh, on that. Um, <laughs> so, my oh, wide yeah. receiver is Garrett Wilson. Be- <laughs> Simple. Yeah, he's back. The matchup is not great against Seattle. I don't care. Is Mike White the quarterback? Then we're good to go with Garrett Wilson. In three Mike White starts, he's averaging 10 targets, 112 receiving yards, and 18 fantasy points per game. He's a solid wide receiver, too, for fantasy and a must-win game for the Jets. They're going to throw it his way, and he's too talented to be on the bench. Okay. Makes sense. Alan Lazard is my pick. The Lazard king against Minnesota, running the most routes on this team by a lot. Uh, you have a banged up Christian Watson at best. You have an absent Christian Watson at worst. The Vikings are giving up the most passing yards per game. And, uh, this has been, you know, three weeks in a row where we've recommended a wide receiver, uh, against Minnesota. And it's, it's always kind of panned out. I mean, Darius Slayton last week wasn't as good as Hodgins. Both of them had an okay week. Hodgins was a really good week. Mm -hmm. And the week before, uh, what was it? Pittman? who had a pretty big week yeah, PPR-wise. PPR so this is an, a, a matchup that is a must-win for Green Bay. Lazard is getting a ton of targets down the field. And, you know, Christian Watson, this injury, it's been a couple weeks since we've seen it. I think Lazard is going to take advantage of this opportunity in a big-time way. I think Dobbs is a good play as well if Watson is out. Yeah, I agree with that. My tight end start slash stream of the week, it's Cole Komet. To pair with Justin Fields against the Detroit Lions. Last time these two teams faced off, week 10, Cole Komet, four for 74 and two. More important to me, though, is the seven targets. Andy, you were saying your concern with Fields is a little bit around the weapons aren't available. Cole Komet is a good player, and he's been getting more involved lately at, compared to the beginning of the season. And I think that he is a very necessary weapon this week. Since week nine, a 26% target share. That's not a slice of a huge pie from Justin Fields, but it is enough, and the touchdown upside is there. We've talked about the over-under in Detroit, allowing the highest target success rate to the tight end in the NFL. I'm going with David Njoku at Washington against the Manders in three games with Deshaun Watson. He has seen 22% of the targets. It's a very good number for tight ends, and it's a bigger pie than the Chicago passing game. Among tight ends with 40-plus receptions, he ranks sixth in yards per route run. And last week, we saw the Manders. They were demolished by George Kittle. They could have trouble with another athletic tight end this week. If you look at the defense of the Manders, I'm going to read you their uh, position over the last six weeks. They are number six against quarterbacks, number four against running backs, number six against wide receivers. Where have they been beat? At tight end, they are 21st. And on the season, when you adjust for schedule, they're fourth against quarterbacks, third against running backs, fifth against wide receivers, and 19th against tight end. That's kind of where they give up stuff based on their scheme. And I think with the target volume and the athleticism of David Njoku, if you're looking for the back end uh, tight end to play, he's an option. Does that mean you're putting him in over Frymuth after our discussion yesterday? Yes, it does mean I'm putting him in over Frymuth based on that discussion. Dawson Knox is my start of the week against Cincinnati. Championship time, Monday night football, high over under. The last three weeks, he's been a top 10 tight end. 22% of the team's targets in that span. He is taking the place of the... Stephon Diggs. uh, (laughs) Sure, but I was going to go with like, you know, this team used to run a lot of offense through the Beasley-McKenzie universe. Uh, I think they're willing to put more trust into Dawson Knox now that he's healthy. Second highest total of the week. Give me some Dawson Knox to finish the year with Josh Allen. I want that connection versus the uh, connection with Deshaun Watson. That's the second highest total of the week? What's the highest? Is it the uh, Lions game? Lions and Bears. Yeah, 52. Oh, in my. One, right? Wow. Yeah, I mean, I guess I just 
man, I, I obviously there's two good defenses there with Buffalo and Cincinnati, but I'm just expecting these quarterbacks to flat out win. It'll be interesting. Yeah. They both have much better defenses than the Lions and the Bears. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. Jason Moore's Ironclad, Locked and Loaded, 100% Guaranteed Boom Boom Kicker of the Week. Last week on Boom Boom Kicker, we had a trifecta power bomb of shart. <clears throat> a Boom Boom Trio emerged. Some say destiny converged to heights like the great Sean Bradley. I began this journey alone. But now it's full of testosterone, much like the Lions' Michael Badgley. I mean, come on, Sean Bradley reference? Yeah, maybe. That's tremendous. That's the uh, the actor from the movie Space Jam, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> that's right, that's right. As as we've seen on, from the movies. Also, I, I didn't know Badgley was a high-T guy. Oh yeah, I mean, as as well, he's as much high T as the three of us put together. No, 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 this makes sense. Kneecap team. Oh yeah, yeah. break yeah. break the kneecaps. Mm, sure. Bye. Also, genuinely good t uh, kicker start, for what it's worth. I mean, <laughs> yeah, Jason the highest over under in a dome. He does the research. Come on, baby, let's get those titles. It's not just rhyme. No, it's Sean Bra Sean Bradley is fit into Badgley. <laughs> it's not the other way around. Exactly right. I didn't <laughs> sit there and go, I've got to have Sean Bradley. No. Here. No, I mean, there's other 90s NBA players that you could have pivoted to if need be. One week left on the Boom Boom story. Oh, boy. If that Look, if there's a reason to tune in next week, even if your league is done, you got like how can you have this epic tale and not know how it concludes? We'll be here all next week. <laughs> yeah. Please come hang out with us. <laughs> Celebrate with us. Cry with us. Whatever you want to do. Monday will be a, you know, We'll be reflecting on the weekend, but it won't be over. I mean, we'll have the Monday Night Football game. We'll be hyping it up. Jason will probably be, you know, needing some sort of mediocre performance from Joe Burrow at that point. Yeah, or a great one. Or or a great one. Yeah, yeah. it's, it's yeah. really tough. <laughs> Dino Jr., I've got Joe Burrow. A league of record, I'm playing against Joe Burrow. So, as of right now, I'm against Joe Burrow. Burrow v. Burrow. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, that'll do it for today's episode of the show. Make sure you head over to YouTube, youtube.com slash the fantasy footballer. Subscribe, click the bell, follow along. We're here all off season, two shows a week, an extra show on jointhefoot.com, and check out fantasychamps.com. Use the code free ring with your trophy purchase to get a free championship ring. You can wear it around. You can, um, you know, show it to your significant other and, and your brag parents. your parents and your parents make them proud good luck tonight everybody goodbye thank you for listening to another episode of the fantasy footballers podcast join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on twitter at the ff ballers